Good morning. And welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist on this, the fourth Sunday of Lent. Please take a moment to silent all electronic devices. All of the readings for this Mass can be found on page 1125, page 1125 in your hymnal, and the music and readings can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you would like on the OSM Parish app or click the Sunday Worship Aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Presiding at liturgy is Father Schoberly and preaching is Father Johnson. Please stand and join in singing our gathering song, hymn number 562, From Ashes to the Living Font, hymn number 562. From ashes to the living font, your church must journey, Lord, baptized in grace and grace renewed by your In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, good morning. Members of Old St. Mary's, this is, of course, the season of Lent, and we have been preparing our adults for baptism. That's coming at the Easter Vigil, and we celebrated with them a scrutiny last week. I bet you can't guess what we're going to do this week. That's right. We have a baptism all to ourselves this morning, and I'm happy to welcome the Gross family, and I'd like to introduce James and his wife, Jennifer, and with them are our godparents, Michelle and Brent, and then they have a son to be baptized, and what name do you give your son? Cohen. Cohen. And what do you ask of God's church for Cohen? Cohen. Baptism. Now, you understand by asking for baptism, you are accepting the responsibility of helping him to grow in the practice of the faith, to understand God's commandments of loving God and loving neighbor. Are you prepared to take on that responsibility? Great, great, thank you. And godparents, are you willing to help them to raise Cohen in this faith as well? Members of Old St. Mary's community, are you going to help them also to raise Cohen in the practice of the faith? Then it is with great joy that I now sign Cohen with the sign of the cross in its and claim you for Christ our Savior. I invite your parents to do the same and your godparents to do the same. Sign you with the cross. And let's congratulate them as we send them back to their places. And let us pray. Pray. 
Gracious God, you have called us to this celebration in the middle of the season of Lent, called us to recognize more deeply how you bring light into our world and how you touch all of our hearts with the completeness of Christ. Grant, we pray this morning, that we may understand our responsibilities before you and be able to better share that mission with all people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated to hear God's word. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord.
from death into life. No more short wonder, the valley of death. I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me. All the days of my life, I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, 
Who sinned, this man or his parents, that he is born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on the man's eyes and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So the man went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, it just looks like him. But the man said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, That man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do these things? And, when there was, and there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? The man said, He is a prophet. Now they did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned his parents the one of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is your son the one who you say was born blind? And how does he see now? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid and they, the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as Christ, they would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, the parents said, ask him, he is of age. So a second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, if he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, what did he do for you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, you are that man's disciples. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke through Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to the man, You were born totally in sin, and you were trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that he had been thrown out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? 
Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see might see and those who, might, who see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying we see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. And you were thinking that last week's gospel was long, huh? Yeah. Well, that's one of the benefits of being in cycle A during Lent is we get to hear in these three weeks of, of Lent these wonderful readings. And the call to learn what to save and what to let go of, to learn how to distinguish valuable treasure from things of much less value, well, that frames today's Liturgy of the Word. We begin about a thousand years before the time of Jesus with God's surprising choice of the boy David to be Israel's king. In a society that uh, prized the firstborn, the warriors, the wise men, the prophet Samuel had to accept and defend God's choice of the kid to be anointed as the successor to King Saul. About the only thing more unexpected would have been for Samuel to anoint a woman. But that would have been too much for a people who believed that military victories proved God's favor. Joan of Arc wouldn't come along for another 2,400 years. The, the choice of David and the statement that God sees differently than we do is a setup for the gospel story of the healing of the man born blind. A story about physical healing, to be sure, but also about spiritual awakening. The story opens with the statement that Jesus saw a man who had been blind from birth, a malady that Jesus' disciples had been brought up to believe was a punishment meted out on either the man or his parents. And Jesus adjusts their perspective, explaining that God doesn't see things the way human beings do. He said that the man's condition would show forth the works of God. A statement that uh, St. Paul repeated in his letter to the Romans by saying that those who love God, well, all things work for good for them. That was Jesus' subtle foreshadowing that all he was about to do, all that was about to follow, was a, that he was continuing God's work of creation. And to illustrate that and imitating the account in the book of Genesis regarding the creation of Adam, Jesus made clay from the dust of the ground to use like chrism on this man's eyes, then told him to wash, and that washing opened the man's eyes. And because of his emerging faith, the man began, began to see not just physically, but also spiritually. But, he, but as he was learning to make sense of a world that he had really previously only known and navigated by touch and sound, people around him were annoyed. Religious leaders debunked Jesus, asserted that God would never sanction work on the Sabbath. This fellow's parents were too afraid to 
of the repercussions that might come to them if they took a stand on what had happened. In the end, the man himself gave testimony. This fellow, nameless so that we might recognize ourselves in him, saw one thing clearly. Jesus could not have healed him if he were not of God. He understood ever more clearly that the one who had healed him on the Sabbath was doing the work of God. He was awakened to knowledge, to understanding of who Jesus is. Jesus had opened his eyes to new dimensions of God's goodness, and that was what got him into trouble. As soon as he found himself, he soon found himself in the middle of a circus over a debate of over his character and his integrity and that of his parents and that of Jesus. After the poor fellow had been questioned and abandoned by his parents and excommunicated, Jesus went and found him again. And when he assured him that he truly had encountered the Son of Man, the man bowed down in worship. Well, what about us? Baptism, symbolic of death and rising, our sacrament of reorientation. Unfortunately, all of us who were baptized as infants have, to some degree or another, learned to protect our inherited perspectives, resisting even miracles if they challenge our comfortable patterns of thinking and acting. Somewhat asleep to a richer, more profound understanding of the call to be disciples of Jesus. So this Sunday, we can't help but hear this gospel as an invitation to be awakened and to scrutinize our perspectives and sort through our presuppositions, to see what should be discarded and what new insights might be hidden in unexpected and even unwanted places. True, choosing to learn God's perspective can be challenging and it can be disorienting. But the option is to choose to choose to have self-imposed blindness. So as we continue the journey through the holy season of Lent, may we be awakened to a deeper, truer understanding and knowledge of who Jesus is, for us and for all, and be committed even more faithfully to following the ways of God as shown forth in the life and the words and the actions of Jesus. I now call forward our parents and godparents along with Cohen. Oh, right here. <laughs> call forward. <laughs> and I invite everyone else to please stand as well. Parents and godparents. Through the sacrament of baptism, this child you have presented is about to receive from the love of God new life by water and the Holy Spirit. For your part, you must strive to bring him up in the faith so that this divine life may be preserved from the contagion of sin and may grow in him day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, then mindful of your own baptism, Renounce sin and profess faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church in which children are baptized. 
So I ask you and all who are baptized here present, do you renounce Satan? And all his works? And all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And now, let us invoke the glory and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for Cohen, who is to be baptized, for his parents and godparents, and all the baptized. Give this child new birth in baptism through the radiant divine mystery of your death and resurrection, and join him to your holy church. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Make him a faithful <laughs> disciple and witness to your gospel through baptism and confirmation, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. Lead him through holiness of life to the joys of the heavenly kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Make his parents and godparents be shining examples of the faith to him and keep their family always in your love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our elect, awaiting their baptism at Easter, be guided in their journeys, and may God renew the grace of baptism in each one of us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who lead the church and lead people in our world will create pathways to lasting peace, and that war in Ukraine will soon end, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless our community with awareness of the Holy Spirit's gifts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the full recovery of all the sick suffering and recuperating, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the vision of Christ in glory, be granted all who have died, and especially Wanda Mazur, and consolation for all who mourn be granted, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers of all of us, our community present in person and online, and for every need we hold in the quiet of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Having raised these prayers to our loving God, let us invoke also the intercession of the saints as we bring Cohen to the font for baptism. And you are welcome to turn and watch and adjust your position to see the baptism as well. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, Saint Michael. Pray for us, holy angels of God. Pray for us, Saint John the Baptist. Pray for us, Saint Joseph. Pray for us, Saint Peter and Saint Paul. Pray for us, Saint Andrew. Pray for us, Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray for us, Saint Stephen. 
pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Cohen, may the strength of Christ preserve you who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, that the Lord God Almighty may bestow new life on this child by water and the Holy Spirit. Most merciful Father, from the font of baptism, you have made the new life of your children well up within us. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Springs, Springs of water, bless the Lord. You have been pleased to unite by water and the Holy Spirit all the baptized into one people in your Son, Jesus Christ. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Springs, Springs of, of water, bless, bless the Lord. You free us by the Spirit of your love, whom you pour into our hearts, so that we may delight in your peace. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Springs, Springs of water, bless the Lord. You choose the baptized, that they may joyfully proclaim to all the nations the gospel of your Christ. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Springs of water, bless the Lord. By the mystery of this blessed water, graciously lead to spiritual rebirth your servant Cohen, whom you have called to this cleansing in the faith of the church, that he may have eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. James and Jennifer. Is it your will that Cohen be baptized in this faith we have professed with you? Bring him to the waters of rebirth. Cohen Woods, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin and given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and joined you to his people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation, so that just as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so you may live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Amen. Cohen, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. May the white garment you are wearing be a sign to you of your Christian dignity and with family and friends to help by word and example bring it unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. Amen. Receive now the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly so that your child, enlightened by Christ, may walk always as a child of the light 
and persevering in the faith may run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in that heavenly court. Amen. Cohen, may the Lord Jesus Christ, who made the deaf to hear and the mute to speak, soon open your ears to hear his words and your lips to proclaim his glory to the praise of God the Father. Amen. If I may. It's my pleasure to present to you our newest baptized Christian, Cohen Woods Gross. And this concludes our rite of baptism. As we bring Cohen back into the midst of the assembly, I'll invite you to participate in our collection. The collection will be brought up in the usual way, no extra collection today. Thank you, as always, for your contributions to sustain the parish. Thank you to those who are watching us online. We invite you to contribute as well via the online give button or to mail in your contributions. Thank you, and may God bless you for your generosity. Thank you. Please join in singing hymn number 692, Christ Be Our Light, hymn number 692. Longing for light, we wait in darkness, longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us our own, your only people, light for the world to see. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Longing
Lord, with great joy we place before you these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Almighty Father, we bless you through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, and converted at last to you, made it so that we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, celebrating the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, 
we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, all the bishops, your entire people, and Cohen, newly baptized, and all called to the sacraments. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her spouse, St. Joseph, who we remember especially today, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. United by God's love, we pray in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. That peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my son. Please join in our communion hymn, number 558, Merciful God. Hymn number 558, the Lent's communion refrain.
merciful God, light when the shadows of life cloud our view. Feed us and guide us, merciful God, people who hunger for you. Let us pray. O oh God, you enlighten everyone who comes into this world. Illuminate our hearts with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to you and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. We thank you for joining us in person, present in the room and in person online. We remember to still pray for and take care of one another as we go forward in all this time. A reminder that our Stations of the Cross are this Friday night and every Friday night of Lent at 6 p.m. here. This Friday night, besides the Stations, the Knights of Columbus will be with us to do a fish fry afterwards. So you're welcome to join us for the fish fry stations or any part of either. So that's all come in Friday. Wednesday night this week, now some of you thought it was last week, it got bumped to this week. We have our Taze prayer service at 7 o'clock right here in church on this Wednesday coming up. And then something that you haven't seen in a while because we haven't done it during COVID, and it's the first time that I think we're doing it on a Sunday afternoon. Next Sunday afternoon at 1 p.m., we are doing our parish Lenten penance service. So that's penance, reconciliation, confession. There will be private confessions with that as well. So that's next Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock right here in the church as well. Um, a reminder that the Easter Flower Fund, in honor of people that you're remembering or in honor of people that you want to honor, uh, is open to you for this Easter. The envelopes are on the two tables out in the commons. Feel free to pick one up and uh, make your donation. Uh, Chicago Shares vouchers are available this weekend. Those of you who have been around know that every third weekend of the month, vouchers are available. They are available for you to purchase to hand out to people that you meet on the street who may be in need of assistance, especially for food. It gives them entree to like Jewel Osco, Subway, a place where they can get food and get a meal as well. So that's available on the commons as well. Um, those of you who have been around me for the last few weeks of Lent know that I have been hawking the Discipleship Maker Index Survey, or I just call it the Discipleship Survey. I want you to know that we're in the over 50% bracket, almost 60%. So those of you who haven't done it yet, your voice is missing. So we encourage you, you know, take the opportunity. You've only got two weeks left. So two weeks to get the Discipleship Maker Survey Index, 
do that thing. We have uh, both the uh, website has the link to it as well as the parish app has the link. There's also the QR code that you can scan on either of those places and in the bulletin and there's a flyer over by the table in the comments as well. So take a look add your voice because your voices might be the one missing and might be maybe one of the most important ones well it always is so thank you for helping us move forward with that and then um now i know there are, okay wait a second so i know we have some visitors i know we have some newcomers i know we have some returnees and some people that are recuperating if you fit any of those categories please stand Now, the best part about standing up is to know that I'm going to tell you, you get to be first in line for the reception after Mass, which gives us longer time to talk to you. I hope you will take advantage of that. And then we, we also want to acknowledge, and I'm going to uh, ask the Gross family to stand once again as we congratulate them on the baptism of Christ. And then I'll ask everyone to stand and join me in asking a blessing for mom and dad and then all of us. The Lord God Almighty, through his Son, born of the Virgin Mary, brings joy to Christian mothers as the hope of eternal life shines forth upon their children. May he graciously bless Jennifer, Cohen's mother, so that as she now gives thanks for the gift of her son, she may always may remain united with him in thanksgiving. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord God Almighty, the giver of life both in heaven and on earth, bless James, Cohen's father, so that together with his wife, and especially on this day of St. Joseph, by word and example, they may prove to be the first witnesses of faith to him. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, amen. And may the Lord God Almighty, who by water and the Holy Spirit gives new birth into eternal life, bless all his faithful present here. And by his unfailing light, keep us faithful to the gospel of his only begotten Son, that rescued by his mercy, we may attain the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. You are sent to proclaim the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please join in singing hymn number 757, Amazing Grace, hymn number 757. Mm -hmm. 